Georgia, number one again. But six different teams got first place votes in this week's AP Top 25 after week four. Uh, Michigan at number two got one first place vote. Texas at number three got two first place votes. Ohio State at number four got one first place vote. Florida State, which dropped a spot to number five, got three first place votes. The second most of any other team. Penn State at six, no first place votes. And then Washington, the Washington Huskies with a single first place vote. And that came from Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. So what does it say that the guy in Austin is looking around and being like, yeah, I'll tell you the best team in the country is. It's not down the road. It's out there in Seattle. Tells you that Kirk Bowles is smart. I mean, watch scoreboard watching. Ooh. Yeah, so we're, so you think Washington does not deserve? No, 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 no. I just think he's probably super dialed into Texas, remembers what happened against Wyoming. He's probably like, ah, I don't know if this team's – and then, oh, my gosh, look at the numbers that Washington puts up, and let's go ahead Washington, and put them one. I get, Washington, Washington beat them in the awesome. bowl. By the way, mm -hmm. yep. So oh, like, good point. What well, Washington beat Texas in the bowl, and I, I know, I know Texas, like guys on, on Texas were pretty impre impressed with Washington's physicality. So I'm, I'm sure Bowles has probably heard some of that inside the wagon from them. Washington right. is up to number two in the new CBS Sports 133, um, and CBS Sports 133 also has the same situation where um, you've got Georgia getting first place votes, Ohio State getting first place votes, Michigan getting first place votes and Washington getting first place votes. Big shakeup there in those rankings as well. The Washington rankings are as low as number eight. And again, as I mentioned, as, oh, as low as number nine, excuse me. And again, as high as number one. What's, what's fair for the Washington Huskies, a team that is beating its opponents by an average, of, average score of 49.8 to 17? Mm -hmm. All First FBS team. opponents, but no ranked teams and no no one on the caliber of for example Ohio State's win against Notre Dame what's fair for the Washington Huskies first of all Washington is as low as 10 on one ballot Jeez. Brian Howell of the Daily Camera in Boulder he does not believe in the Washington Huskies um what's fair is this team should be in the top five if you're actually basing it on what's happened on the field. Now, if you want to do power poll projections and all that kind of stuff, I don't think Washington would be top five on most of those. But, like, Georgia's number one. I get it. I don't really blame anybody for still putting Georgia at number one. They've won 21 straight games. They've won two straight national titles. They haven't lost, even if they've looked kind of... How in the hell anybody can look at Michigan this year and just keep putting it at number two when you've got a team like Washington that, sure, its schedule might not be you know as good as some others, but look at Michigan's schedule. Who the hell have they played? And Washington is absolutely trouncing teams. I can't remember who put the stat out, but you know we talked about game control. Washington, 68% of their snaps this year, they have had a 14-point lead or more. Nobody else <laughs> in the country is higher than 57%. They are dominating the teams that they are playing, and that is the sign of a good team. So I have no idea. If you have Michigan ahead of Washington on your ballot, you haven't watched football this year. You've only just stuck with what you thought before the season began, and you just keep putting it down until somebody loses. Texas could be ranked ahead of Washington. I won't argue against you. Florida State can be ahead of them. I won't argue against you. Ohio State, these teams with big wins, I will not argue against you. But if you're putting Michigan ahead of Washington based on 2023, you just don't pay attention. Completely agree. Like, I totally understand Georgia being where they are because we have seen Georgia build to a ridiculous level before throughout the season. Although last year, obviously, they trounced Oregon, so they were not building. But in prior years, they certainly have done so. And we, there are pretty good reasons why Georgia at times hasn't played great. We can point to them. They have a lot of guys out, right? Like the entire running back room's gone. They're playing like some white walk-on receiver at running back for a little while. Yeah, they, Ladd they hasn't have, even played. Right, Ladd, Ladd McConkey hasn't played. M Mims has been out. Like they, their 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 sack leader from last year has been out. Marvin Jones Jr. has been out. Right, like they've been very banged up, and yet they're still largely handling business. They shut down Spencer Rattler, who I think is playing like a top five quarterback in the country so far this year, especially <laughs> really? with all that pressure on him. Like right. Rattler's gonna gonna be the number three quarterback in this draft, I think, that nobody's talking about right now with how damn well he's playing and handling pressure and the ridiculous throws he's making. It is so, really one of the best stories in the sport this year. Yeah. I, I get Georgia. Michigan has been largely embarrassed in two playoff games that they made. 
And they have shown they can play as a playoff caliber team, but not a national title caliber team. So far this year, Washington has played a tougher schedule and has played it better than what Michigan has played. Like if Michigan's just playing possum, we should treat them like they're like potentially playing possum, which they could be. Like they're playing 50 snaps a game. They're slower than some of the service academies. They're not trying to show much. And because their schedule is such a complete joke, they don't really have to. But we shouldn't reward them for doing that so far. Like let's let's reward Washington. I, if I, If we're going just off what we've seen this year, Michigan has not looked like a top five team, right? They haven't I mean, covered like a spread they, yet. They screwed around with Bowling Green. They allowed a terrible Rutgers offense to score. Uh, I mean, if you're going just off this year, Florida State and Washington are clearly over them. I think it's all so. Like, I think if you did the history, you know, matters. Georgia won back to back. You don't knock them from the top. I can see a little bit where you say, "Hey, what's what about Michigan's history? Back to back Big Ten champs." I get that a little bit. I almost feel like you almost have to be married to those two together. Then if your eye test or game control, I think it's Washington, they're your number one team. And if it was resume based, I think Florida State would have like who has two better wins, which is kind of funny because people are diminishing the Clemson win as if, oh, they weren't ranked. They're a bunch of trash this year. I think it's kind of rich, you know, just considering where we are in college football. If that's where you want to ding them for, that's like more of an ACC hatred thing coming from SEC people than anything. Um but I think it's great the fact that we do have six. You know, I think I think it's awesome. I love the debate because I'm tired of looking up and it's what is it, 66 votes unanimous for Georgia mm-hmm. number one. Like this is awesome. The fact because they're all making really good cases and you can justify each one by whatever metric you want. I think it's great. Fun comparison. All right. Wins over Big Ten teams. Washington won. Michigan none. Road <laughs> wins over Big Ten teams. Washington Wait. won. Road games at all. Michigan none. Like they've been playing nobody at home. Washington's gone on the road and beaten Michigan State and beat the hell out of them. Yeah, that was the other thing is, um, boy, like you can't say that the schedule was put together to be easy. You know, Boise State is one of your opponents right there uh, at Michigan State. Who knew the the situation that was going to be when you draw up that contract? You know, two three years ago or whatever. And then look, Cal. Spabs boys, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll get out there and they'll do something, right? I mean, that's not a total bottom feeder type team. It's, <laughs> I, it is, you think that they are the 12th team in the Pac 12? Can I be skeptical on Washington for, for a couple minutes here? 100%. Sure, line. Like they are doing what they have done and they cannot control their schedule. However, Cal's passing offense just sucks out loud. They got, I think, the backup for Tulsa if I recall for most of that game, but regardless, like Tulsa is not a good passing offense. They got Michigan state, which is a, I mean, you see how bad of a player Peyton Thorne is. And he left like Auburn portaled him out of Michigan state and they lost their two good receivers. Michigan state's passing offense is terrible. They they have not seen a cop. Now neither is Michigan, but neither of these teams have played a competent passing offense. And they're going to see a lot of them in the final seven games. So we don't know if Washington's pass defense is any good. Last year, they got lit up. I haven't seen any like re- reasonable reason to believe they're improved because I think they've played nothing but really bad passing offenses so far. So it's just an incomplete grade for me on what we thought the weaknesses were for Washington. The Where strengths are the strengths. I'll also say, well, Washington is no doubt a wagon. If there is a weakness on it so far that I've seen, it's the defensive line. Like, there's no Vita Vea on this Washington team. And had, there's been, they've had guys like that in the last few years. I don't see one of them on this defensive line this year, which I think, again, could be problems for them. It's just the thing Washington does have that nobody on their schedule has, except maybe USC. They have an NFL quarterback and three NFL wide receivers. And when you have that, you are going to do just fine in this sport. 